Welcome to our JSON course. So that's JavaScript object notation course. My name is Lawrence and I'm so excited to have the opportunity to present this course to you today. I've been a web developer for a number of years and working with JSON really gives us a great way to transmit and utilize data, especially within JavaScript. So JSON essentially is extended from JavaScript. It's a media type, so the extension for it is JSON, J-S-O-N. It always starts and ends with curly brackets. The names are separated with a colon, and each name can have a pair value, so those can be separated by a comma. So the way that it looks is it's a key name value pairs. So we've got our key name here, and then we've got our value. And notice as well that they are they do have the double quotes around it. And if you've got multiple values, you can separate them. So comma separate them. So we can have three different values within the JSON. And we can also use arrays in here as well. So that can notate that we've got multiple values contained within name there. So that would be an array that's contained within an object. So it does look very similar to JavaScript and JavaScript objects, but there are some differences to keep in mind and we are going to be going over those within the upcoming lessons. So basically it allows us to structure and organize our data. It's ideal for web APIs and actually most of the web APIs nowadays are using JSON. So it's a preferred method over XML, whereas XML was a little bit more bulkier and JSON of course is easier to read. And when you're doing API requests and you're getting those API responses, more than likely there's always a JSON option. So this is just gives you a quick overview of the different data types that can be used within JSON. And we are gonna be re reviewing those in the upcoming lesson as well. And there's also various tools that we're gonna to be looking at, such as JSON Lint, and that's gonna give us the ability to lint and make the JSON a little bit more readable. So when we do something like this, where we output this into the console, you can see that this is similar to JavaScript, we can also write it within strict JSON format where we've got the double quotes with around that object information for those named paired values. We're also going to look at how we can write out those JavaScript objects. So we know within JavaScript objects, when we create an object, we can write it out with the dot notation or we can do the bracket notation. So either way we get the same result and we can output that data. So there's a number of different better ways to output that content. So if we have multiple cars, we can put them within a variable called cars and then we can contain them and that gives us the ability to extend on that. And sometimes you will see that JSON does get fairly long. So there is quite a bit of data that can be contained within there. So that's why it's always good to think of structure, how you're structuring that content that's presented within the JSON data. So here's some more examples. Uh, so JSON versus XML versus YAML. Uh, so there are some differences. JSON's the one here on the left-hand side. So this is one of the easiest ones to read, write, and use within JavaScript. Uh, so there are some differences, of course, between JavaScript. So within JavaScript, we don't need to have the quotes around it. Within JSON, we need to have double quotes. So JavaScript can be single or double quotes. Also, we can't run any functions within JSON either. So we're also going to be showing you some of the tools and resources online in order to use and work with JSON. And then within the upcoming lessons are designed to get you to practice and work with JSON. So we're going to go over the different JavaScript data types. We're going to have got a number of exercises planned showing you how to stringify and parse JSON and bring it back into usable formats and then object formats. Also how that can be used within local storage. So storing values into your local storage. So you can see that we've got some values that are being stored within there. Uh, we're also gonna be showing you how to get content from online so that you can get JSON data from my JSON file and then output that within your JavaScript. We're also gonna show you how you can use an API and get some random data output into your web application and then extend on that how we can pull a bunch of information and then this is all JSON formatted data and it's a great place to practice and get more familiar with working with JSON. So we're going to show you how to connect to this API, bring it into your JavaScript and then let you go through the data and output content into your web page. 
And then lastly, we're also going to show you how you can use your Google Sheet and output content from your Google Sheet into your web application. So showing you how to do that. And then even if you update your content within your Google spreadsheet, you can see that this is being pulled directly from our Google spreadsheet. So when we update it, we update it as well within our web page. So this is pulled in from a web API essentially, and it also gives you a great place to practice and become more familiar with working with JSON through using a Google spreadsheet and then you can easily access that data, update it, make changes to it, and really challenge yourself to return that and retrieve that data back into your web content. So all this and a whole lot more, and of course, source code is always included to get you started quickly and practicing working with JSON. So when you're ready, let's jump right in and begin. Welcome and in this lesson we're going to run through some of the resources we're going to be using within the upcoming lessons. So we're going to be using an editor. The editor that we're going to be using within the course is called Brackets and it gives us the ability to write our JSON code and then render it out within our browser. The browser that we're going to be using is Chrome. There's also a few other tools that we are going to be looking at as well. So if you are interested in using the same editor that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using brackets available at brackets.io. This is an Adobe product. It's got a lot of really nice features and another feature, one of the features that I'm going to be using is the live preview. So that gives me the ability to kind of generate out this local machine address where I don't have to use the file protocol. I can use the HTTP protocol. Uh, so this is important when you're working within browsers because you want to be able to render things out locally and within brackets this is built in. So this is a really nice feature. You could also run a local machine as well and of course because this is mainly going to be JavaScript and HTML all you need is a browser in order to render it out. And again I am using Chrome and one of the nice things about Chrome is it's got dev tools in order to open up the dev tools you can click anywhere on any website and go to inspect or you can go up here top right hand corner where you've got the three dots here go to more tools and hit developer tools and there's also a shortcut as well with the command the shift command option and that will open up the developer tools so what you see when you open up developer tools you see that you've got all of the source code and any elements that you select here when you go inspect you can see it popping up here under the elements tab and predominantly the tab that we're going to be spending most of the time on is in the console i usually close the doors so i have a nice clean console and you can also clear out your console this way as well there are some defaults uh, so again i usually default it to dock it to the right side uh, you can also dock it to the bottom or dock it to the left so depending on how much space i have i will dock it to the bottom on the split screens so that I'm not taking up the full screen and I don't have three different horizontal or vertical separations on the screen. So another some of the other resources that we're going to be using as well. So there's json.org. So it's got a lot of great information about JSON and it's got some diagrams, how JSON works. And we are going to be going through all of this within the upcoming lessons. And as you can see, JSON is used in a lot of languages. So there's a ton of languages and this is JavaScript based, just like the name implies when you look at the name, JavaScript object notation. Similar to what you see within JavaScript objects, but there are some slight differences. And we know within JavaScript objects, we can have an object and we've got these pairs values. So we have a string and then we have a value attached to it. We can also uh, have a string, have an array, objects, uh, any one of these different data types. And of course, we are going to be looking at that later on as well. There are some other resources that we're going to be using. So myjson.com gives us the ability to create a JSON file, store it online, and then of course, we can grab that within our code. So I'll show you how to do that as well. There's JSON lint. So there's a number of these available online. And this is a really good one because you can paste some JSON in there and you can see if it's valid. So I've got this JSON generator that I've gone to so if I paste it in here I can go down here and I can validate JSON and I can see that this isn't 
valid JSON, so it's got a string where it's undefined. So we do need to take care of that and we need to fix that up if we wanna have it as valid JSON. And that's because we don't have the quotes around it. So we are gonna be taking care of that and looking at that later on as well. There's also this object generator, so it gives us the ability to generate a JSON object, so you see here, on the left hand side when we're defining it. So we've got first name and then we can enter in some values into it there. So we can also do last name as well and just do an equal sign. So on the left hand side is what you would typically see as you're able to read it. And then on the right hand side is the JSON. And as you can see as well, JSON is human readable. So it really makes sense. And this is one of the reasons why everyone loves using JSON because you can clearly see what data is contained within here. So we've got your first name, your last name. And of course, if I take this and if I place it into the lint and I validate it, we see that it is valid JSON. So we've got the valid JSON over here. Uh, so essentially this is what we're gonna be showing you in the upcoming lessons. And then of course within Wikipedia, there's some even more information about JSON and there's some great examples here that we are gonna be taking a closer look at in the upcoming lessons. So having said all of this, what I want you to do now is open up your editor and get ready to write some code. We're gonna be starting off by looking at JavaScript objects and then seeing how they relate to JSON. So all of this is still yet to come. Welcome back in. In this lesson, we are gonna be writing some JavaScript, looking at JavaScript objects, and then we're gonna see how they differ from JSON data. So first off, let's start out by building up and creating our basic HTML page. I've got an HTML template generator here, so all I'm doing is setting up the HTML, the head tags, the body tags, so that I can write some JavaScript. So within here is where I'm gonna write the JavaScript, and we're just gonna do it uh, within the HTML page. Also, I'm gonna just change the title to JSON. So let's go ahead and write some plain JavaScript. So we know within JavaScript, we can set up variables. So we can have variables that are string values. So they can be, so we can have a type string. We'll just call it T string. So this is surrounded by double quotes, or you could do T string two, and we could surround it by single quotes. So we can set up variables within this way. They can also be numbers as well. So this is a uh, number, notice there's no brackets around it. Boolean values, so T booleans. And this can either be true or false. There's also nulls, so it can also be null and variable can also be undefined. So these are the core data types within JavaScript. So if you go and if you refresh it and we go to inspect, we're not gonna throw any errors. All we've done is we've logged different values and then we can actually access them as well directly in here. So we can go T string, we can see the value for T string, T string two, and so on. It simply returns back the value. And the reason I'm showing you these is because when it comes to JavaScript objects, we've got the ability to do arrays, so I call it T array. They can contain strings in there. They can contain numbers, contain other arrays as well. So you can have an array within an array, and then this can have a number of different values and so on. So you can do arrays within this type of format as well. And all of these are just different ways to contain values. So you see when you output it here within the console, you can see that array within the array and so on. Another main way to hold data and hold content is using objects within JavaScript. So objects look like this. They've got the curly brackets. And the difference between objects is that they're written with name value pairs that every value in here will have a corresponding value to it. I can separate it out with the quotes. So now when I refresh this, T objects, So now if we do T objects, you can see that we've got our object there. And notice the way that it's outputting it. So it's not actually quoting around there, even though I do have a quote in there. Uh, there's different ways. So do T objects too. And you can see it's still valid. It still works within JavaScript. We can also do multiple different ways. So do T objects three. And this time we can use the double quotes if we wanted to. 
So again, we'll just refresh that. And you see it's still valid and it still outputs the data. You could also define an empty object. So do T objects four, and then you can place content within there if you wanted to. Just declare an empty object. So it's just the curly brackets. And then afterwards you can place data in there. So you can do T objects four dot, and then we can specify it with first, and then we can equal it to Lawrence again. So same thing, same idea that we're still adding in data and information and we still get the same results. So they're still all still equal. And then you can also add values. So we can do two e T objects for, and let's do last within this type of format. So you can also use the bracketed format. So let's uh, refresh one more time and we'll output the contents. And you can see that we're still able to add in values. So there's a number of ways to work with these values once they're within JavaScript and once they're within a way that we're holding all of these values and associating it with the variable. And then all we need to do is reference the variable and we can get access to the information contained within that variable. You also will see different combinations as well. So you can have different combinations of T objects five, where you might have an array. So we'll call it my array. And we're gonna do this within an object format. So this is gonna be an array within an object. And you can link to the different variables. So I'm gonna grab the one that I have here. And let's uh, refresh one more time. So you can see that you've got the array contained within the object. You can also add objects within objects as well. So we can do T objects and let's do it within a different type of format. So we'll call it my object. Let's go ahead and add in T objects four into here. So we'll refresh it and five. And now you can see that we've got an array We've got an object, so we've got an array within our object, we've got an object within our object, and we can still reference these values if we wanted to. So we could do T objects five, and then within here, we can access. So if we want to get access to the my object value, we can see that that outputs that there. And then if we want to get the first name, we can output it this way as well. So as long as we have a way and a path to reference those values, we can always get to those values contained within there. So these are just different ways of storing information into our JavaScript variables and then accessing that information later on as well. The more familiar you are with the different data types and how JavaScript can access data and how you can access the data that's deep with inside an object within an array, the easier it is to be able to traverse through your JSON objects. So I want you to try this out for yourself. So go ahead and open up your editor or you can open up your browser and create an object. So you can just do something like variable my object and create an object. And then within the my object, you can add in content. So you can do something like first, so now you can see that within my object, we've added in first. You can also add in last as well. And just get familiar with adding in content into JavaScript objects. So try it out for yourself. Open up your editor or open up your browser, DevTools, and open up the console and try creating JavaScript object and then adding in first, your first name, your last name, and then outputting that object. So you can do it within the editor. Uh, of course, within the browser, when you write this code and you refresh it, it's gonna be gone. So it's only available in that instance. If you want something more permanent, then create it within your editor. Try it out for yourself and build out your JavaScript objects. I know you're here for JSON, so let's jump right into using JSON. So in the previous lesson, we looked at JavaScript object, and we also saw that it's very similar to the way that JSON looks. So if we create a variable, let's call it my JSON, and we can set it up as a JavaScript object. And then within here, if we have a name, 
And make sure that you're double quoting around when you're writing JSON format. So it's the same type of format where we've got a name and there's a value associated with it. So the same way that we could get those JavaScript objects, we can also get the JSON object. So if I just wanted to get the name, I could do my JSON name using an object format and then we can return back the name. I can also do it within this type of format as well, where we could do the bracketed format and I can return back the name as well. So these can be used interchangeably. And the difference really here is that this way can be made more dynamic. And I'll show you a little bit more about that coming up in the later lessons. So let's open up our browser again, where we had it before and we had all of the different Java JSON validators. And let's take our JSON code and we should probably add in something else in here as well. So because it's set of different paired values with commas separate them out. So if we wanted to do something like age, and I'm not gonna give you my real age, but we'll just do 30 for now. So you can see that when I go back out here, everything is still working the same way. So if I return back that my JSON, I can output it, I can see the name, I can see the age, and I have access to that data. So let's try that out and add it into the validator. So what do you think will happen here? And uh, so I'm just gonna clear this out and I'm gonna copy and paste my JSON object. And do you think it's gonna be valid when I press validate JSON? What do you think is gonna happen here? And if you said it is valid JSON, you are correct because the format that I was writing it within the JavaScript here, we did make it a valid JSON object. So if you take, again, that JavaScript object, and this isn't going to be JSON, although it's going to work within JavaScript, it's not going to work within the JSON object. So if I was to take something like this and copy and paste it in, and validate JSON, we see that this is no longer valid JSON because it's looking for those double quotes. Uh, so if I do update it with double quotes, but let's say I change these to single quotes, what do you think? Valid JSON, not valid JSON. We know that it works within JavaScript and we see that this is not valid JSON. So it's expecting a particular format and double quotes, single quotes are not interchangeable within the JSON format. So it needs to be double quotes. And we also need to quote around the named value because within JavaScript, we can have these names and we can use them interchangeably. But if we will have a name and if we do something like first, Within JavaScript, generally you're gonna shy away from doing it within this type of format because we can't have the spaces there. But within JSON, when we go over here, we see it's still valid JSON. So whereas if we left the space within JavaScript and we go back to our JavaScript object, do you think we're gonna throw any errors when I refresh it? Uh, and if you said no, you're gonna be correct that we don't throw any errors and we can still reference this object, but we always need to quote around it. We can't do something like my JSON and then, so it becomes really problematic. Like I can't do name space first because this just won't work in JavaScript. There's a syntax error because it doesn't accept those spaces. And the other thing too is when you're creating JavaScript objects, you can't have them with a one in front or something like that. So that also keep that in mind. So usually the best way to do JSON as well is to try to keep it similar, uh, not use the spaces if you can avoid it. If you really have to use them, it's still gonna be valid, but it's just not good practice. So the best thing to do is usually try to keep it similar to the way that you'd write it within JavaScript. So do a camel case here where instead of the space, you do an uppercase. There's also other things as well within JavaScript that we can do. So if we wanted to create an object, because this isn't gonna be valid JSON, if you do an object here, and let's say within the object itself, you had a function, so this function. So we know within JavaScript, when I save that, and if I go back out to here, and let's uh, go out and refresh, we know that this is still valid, this still works, uh, that I can run this as a function and it contains that function code. But this, for sure, it's not gonna work within JSON because again, it's not JSON formatted. That's what there's a few differences between JavaScript objects and JSON and this is definitely one of those. 
And let's just make this a little bit bigger. And then of course, this, uh, if we want to turn it into an object format, we need to do the brackets around there and I can do test. So now when we go out and if we refresh it, if I do the my object dot test and I invoke the function, we see that we're getting that value being returned back, but of course still not a valid JSON object. So now it's up to you. So try this out for yourself, create your own JSON object, and then you can go into any one of the my JSON or the JSON lint or any of the other ones that are available online and paste your JSON and try out just different formats of JSON and make sure that it's valid. So you're able to write some valid JSON and you don't have to make it very complex. You can just do just a simple name pair value. So you have a name and a value, name, value, comma, separate them out, and then just do the curly brackets around that object. And I'll show you some more complex stuff coming up in the upcoming lessons. Now that you're comfortable with writing JSON, let me show you some of the really cool features when it comes to JavaScript and JSON content. So if we create our J JSON object, and I'll call it my JSON, and let's do something similar to what we had before, and this time let's do first. So do uh, first name, last name type thing, and then comma separated out, uh, last, then do the last name, so just create a really simple JSON object. And then within here, we can see when we output it into our console. So if we do the my JSON, we see that it's really nicely easily broken up. So if we want to get to the my JSON and the first name, we can do it this way and last name as well within that object format. So we're all ready to go when we bring in a JSON formatted object. But there are some cases where you might want to store your JSON object in one variable, such as if you're storing it to local storage, then you do need to store it in as one variable and then save it as a named value because you can't go through all your JSON objects and save them separately. Not really good good idea. So the easiest way is to stringify it. So when you take a JSON value and you stringify it, so we'll call it my JSON and we'll call it st stringified. So I'm not sure that's a word, but stringified and we can do stringify with JavaScript. And the way that we do stringify is we do JSON and this invokes the JSON method. And then within here, we've got one called stringify. So we can convert a value to JSON, optionally replacing values, and basically we're stringifying that JSON object, and we can also parse it in. So when we stringify it, we take in that my JSON value, and I'll show you what the difference here is gonna be. So when I refresh it, we see that we still have the my JSON, if we wanna output that. And we also have the my JSON stringified version. And if we output that, we see that it's just a little bit different. Uh, so we're not actually seeing the first name, the last name, it's all quoted. So this is the same as within just a, right, any string value. This is a string value of the JSON object. And the reason that we do this is because this allows us the ability to convert our object into a, a string value, and then we can save it and send it to a server, a web server, and also we can store it into values where we need to use it as a string value. And then to get it back into a usable format, so you'll find sometimes with JSON it is within a string value, so then you have to bring it out of that string value, and in order to bring it out of the string value, so do the same thing, my JSON, and we'll call it parsed. So this one is using the JSON object again, and parse transforms it back into an object. So if I take that value, so remember this is the stringified version, and if I place that in there and refresh, now if I do the my JSON stringified, we're still stringified on this, but if I do the my JSON parsed, you can see that it's back within that usable format. So you'll find this within applications that there are times that you want to stringify it, and then if you've got a string version of a JSON object, and you want to get it back into a usable format in JavaScript, then you'll parse it back out. So I want you to try this out for yourself. 
So take that JSON object that you created earlier, stringify it using json.stringify in your JavaScript code, and then you can also access, update it, and so on. And then once it's parsed, back to stringify, and then save it as a stringified value again. So let me show you an example of that. So we see that we start out as a J JavaScript object. So this isn't a stringified version. Uh, this is one that we can access and we can use. And then when we get to the stringified version, this is just one string value. We parse it back out. And now if we wanted to, we could do the my JSON parsed value and we can update the first name and we'll change this to different first name. And so now at this point, if we were to console log out our myjson parsed value, we're going to see that it's within an object format. And so we want to turn it back into a stringified version. So let's uh, to send our data. So we'll call it send data. And this is where we turn it back into stringified version. And we're going to take that my JSON parsed value, and we're going to turn it back into a string version. And then we'll log console log out the string version. So let's try that out. And I know that we kind of jumped through a few hoops here. Uh, but basically, we start out with the my JSON version. And that's not the output from there. But we see that we turn it into a stringified version. So we've got it as a string, then we parse it back out into a usable format using the JSON parse. Then we update the first name of it. And we output the new version out within JSON parsed. And then we create another instance of it and stringify it again. And then this is the data that we're sending back to the server. Uh, so also console log out those other steps in between. So now that uh, we've got kind of a good example, so we'll get rid of the parse there and do this big long one, my JSON stringified, so that we can really see what's happening here. So the data comes in and it's an object format. We can make use of it, change it. Uh, then we transform into a string value. And then we take that string value and we parse it back into a usable format using JSON parse. And then we turn it back, we update it. So that's our update there. We had changed the first name and then we turn it back into string version. So the idea here is that this is getting data, working with it, updating it, and then getting it back to into our string version where we can send that data and store that data within the value. So I'm going to show you a little bit more about that coming up later on where we're going to store it into local storage. But for now, try this out for yourself. Try these methods, the JSON stringify and the JSON parse and get familiar with it and uh, also try updating some stringified values and then uh, parsing it and then updating it back into a string. So switching it back and forth between that string value and the regular object format. Welcome back and I hope you had an opportunity to try it out. So you're probably wondering, well, why do I need to have a string version and then parse it out? Why can't we just have it within an object format? So let me give you an example. So if you want to store it into your local storage, you can't store it as an object format. So it's showing you the way that that's going to work. Uh, let's uh, first create some JavaScript here and we'll give it an ID and we'll just call it button. And we'll say press me. So when we press the button, we want to store that content into local storage. And also, let's create an input field here and give it a type text. And then we'll give it an ID as well. So this is going to be first name. And then when uh, we'll just leave it at that. And then we're going to set up when the page loads. So we're going to grab those values. So let's add an event listener. So we'll just add an event listener directly. We'll get element by ID. And then we're going to grab the button, add event listener. And the event listener that we're going to add is a click. So whenever it gets clicked, add to 
storage. And that's the function that we're going to invoke. Uh, so next, let's create our function. So add to storage. And then within this function, so let's just, uh, first of all, I usually like to make sure that things are working whenever I add these event listeners. And uh, it's always a good idea just to try it out for yourself. Just make sure that it is working. So let's refresh. And I know this doesn't really look like a button, but it is working. We're able to click it. So that's exactly what we wanted to do. Uh, so once it gets clicked, then let's uh, do a variable or do let. So just do a temporary variable and let and const give you more scope control over your variables. So that's with ES6. Uh, so let's do let and within let we're going to do uh, temp value. So this is going to be the value of the first name and using the document object. I use just get element by ID. So first name. So usually the easiest way to grab a value. And then within here, we're just going to output that value whenever it gets clicked. So let's just make sure that we're able to pick up a value. So we can do test and clicked. So we're able to pick up those new values as they get updated. So that's exactly what we want to do because we want to store it to local storage. Uh, and then also let's add in one more button. So we'll do an add, or call it add. So quick update and C button. So this is add button, that's C button. And the reason that I'm doing two buttons is because I want to have one button where we can actually see the contents of the local storage. So let me make this a little bit bigger. Uh, so we've got the two buttons and this one, so this is going to be add to storage and this C button is going to be the one that C storage. Or I could just call it view storage. Actually view is probably better, sounds a little bit better. And we'll just keep it as C button. Just to keep things simple. Uh, and then next, uh, so we need to have a way to see the contents of the storage. Uh, so let's set that one up. So that's another function. And this one is going to be C storage. So we don't need to get that value. And we'll just get the clicked, make sure that the clicked is working for that one as well. Uh, so make this small again. Refresh our page and make sure that both of our buttons are working, which they are. Perfect. Uh, so next, we're ready to build out the rest of this where we're going to actually add and set values into our local storage. And then we're also going to retrieve those inf that those values back. We've got add to storage. We've got the view storage. So this is where we actually try to get content that's contained within the storage. So let's output that content. Do another variable let. And we can call it temp holder as well. Uh, so this one is going to use local storage and it's going to get an item. So we're going to just have an item called tester. So we're going to grab the value of the item called tester and then we're going to output that into our view area. And right now we don't have anything within the local storage so we're actually not going to return anything back. So let's uh, do a quick refresh and I should update these as well. So view storage and then we're just going to do add to store storage so refresh those so we've got our view storage and we've got add to storage so we've got null right now within the storage so now what we want to do instead of just logging it out we want to set it into the storage so let's set that up and we can do local storage set item and we need to set it by the same name that we're trying to retrieve it by. So tester, and then the value that we're storing is temp value. So we don't have an option here for a full object. And that's the interesting thing about it here is that we don't have that option. Uh, and if we do try to store it as, so I'll try to put this JSON object in first, and then we'll update that after. And I'll just show you that it's not gonna work like this. And that's one of the reasons, so that's why this is a good example of why we want to have this 
storage within this type of format because it's within object object. So it's really hard to, to grab that back in and then also make use of it because uh, it's within an object format. And if we do something like temp holder and do a refresh, we see that it's just returning back object object. So what we want to do ideally is this is where we want to turn it into and set it as a stringified version. So we want to get, so if we want to use the my JSON object and we want to update this. So if we have first name and let's also say maybe we have last name as well. So yeah, if you have something a little bit more complex and then we'll also do one for last name as well. So we'll just duplicate that out. And then we're gonna turn it into an object last. And then this is just getting whatever the value of last name is. Uh, so let's uh, turn that into an object. So let's do let my object. And then we're gonna create our object and we're gonna do it within a JSON format. So we've got first and then equal that to temp first and then comma separated out. So then next we've got last and equal that to temp last. So we've got some values in there and now it's also console log that out. So while we've got that object, we can log that out and we can see what it looks like. So I think we're ready. So let's uh, try that out and let's do test, test four, add to storage. And we see that temp value, of course, not defined and let's uh, try that one more time. So let's refresh. So let's do first, last name, add to storage. And again, we're adding it within an object format. So we're not able, if we go to view, we can't really easily see and view it. Uh, even if I get rid of the clicked and we try to view it, you're gonna see that it's still within this object format. So we gotta break it out of the object format. And ideally this is where we use the stringify and the parse in order to stringify it and place it within the local storage and then pull it out of the local storage and parse it. Uh, so now it's up to you. So I want you to try to set this up as well for yourself. Uh, so set up a couple inputs, add a few event listeners to a couple buttons and then add in the content and set it up that you can stringify it before you set the item tester. And then once you get the item tester, within a stringified format before you output into the console, output it and parse it using JSON parse. So try it out for yourself and I'll show you the solution coming up in the next lesson. In the previous lesson, we saw how we can use JSON parse and JSON stringify in order to better handle objects, turn them into strings, and then take those strings and turn them back into objects. And one of the cases that you might wanna do this for is local storage, because it's gonna save you a lot of trouble of setting up items when you can just do it as one kind of block string instead of having to convert it. So we've got our object over here and we wanna convert this object into a JSON format, a string format. And so we've got our my object here and we want to convert it. So we've got a number of options where we can convert it. Uh, so we can create another variable if we wanted to. We could do JSON stringify and then just wrap around it. So usually this is the way that I'll prefer to do that. Uh, or you could do it when you're setting it within the local storage. So these ones are both options that you can use. Uh, so now when I add some content into here, and if I do add to storage, and if I view storage, I've got my string value here, just as what we saw earlier. So I have access to it and I can use it. And also let me, uh, let's clean up some of this code from before, because we actually don't need any of the stuff from before. I'll get rid of this stuff down here as well. So we're not outputting tons of stuff out into the console. And let me clean this up one more time. Let's make it bigger. And now, We've, we're storing it within a JSON format, so we're outputting it within JSON. I'm gonna get rid of all of these console messages and we're just storing it to our local storage. So next, what we wanna do when we view it from storage, we wanna output it into a usable format again. And the way to do that is that we're gonna take that and we're gonna parse it back into our usable format. So for now, we're just gonna do JSON parse on the value. So this is a string value, remember, within tester because we've converted our object into a string format. 
So if we want to make use of it one more time, so let's do add to storage, and then we'll do view storage. And you can see now, if I want to, I can manipulate the data, I can make use of it, and I can take that information and output it as well. So there's one other thing that I want to quickly add, and this is just kind of our way to hold the storage content. Uh, so we've got our, my JSON, get rid of that, and we'll use const. So this is just gonna be, call it const people. And from here, we want to do a JSON parse of the local storage item. So let's uh, do our local storage and then do get item. And the item that we're getting is tester. So that when the page loads, then we're actually going to parse this through and we're going to put it into our constant people. So right now, when the page loads, people is going to actually contain the content from tester. So let's show you how that works. So if we go to load out the contents of people, and let's refresh the page. So remember, this is getting it from the local storage because we've already deposited it in there. But let's say this is the first time it's loading and there's nothing in there for tester. And we'll just rename tester to tester1. So the first time that we load it, we're actually not going to get any content. So we want to fix that. So we want the ability to actually be able to view content that's available within the, within the people. So we can do people and also let's add in the or. So within first and then last, and we'll also set that to none. So this is just a default if we don't have any values that are loaded. Let's uh, refresh. And now this time we actually have content if we do view. So let's uh, fix up view to make sure that we always have something that we can load. So instead of temp holder, local storage, get item, move this one out so we're consistent. If this one doesn't exist, then we'll just load whatever the contents of people are if they want to view the storage. And then if it does exist, so if we do view storage, we're getting that content. And now let's set something into storage. Remember, we're setting it into tester one. Uh, so add to storage. And now if I do view storage, I've got the content in there. If I refresh the page, by default, I've got the viewed storage. So this is basically a good use case for why we, you would be using JSON parse and JSON stringify. And it's also good when you're depositing content into the database. So go ahead and practice, try this out for yourself, adding in objects and also saving them to the local storage and then pulling it out of the local storage and then adding it into updating the local storage as well. So try this out for yourself. JSON is used everywhere on the web. It's the most popular data format for exchanging data. So in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to connect to a file online that holds some JSON data. And we saw earlier that one of the resources that I was recommending that's really nice to use is the MyJSON. So we see we've got our first name there. And also, let's actually put in our information that's contained here as well. So we can put the first name, last name. Uh, maybe we'll just format it like this and then comma separate it out. I know this is super small, but uh, let's put that in. And so we've got our first name, last name, comma separated, save it. And all I really wanted to do is to be able to get that JSON file. So now when we output it, we've got a file online. So it's JSON, uh, it's, JSON it's valid JSON. And we want to take this information and we want to use it within our JavaScript and output it on our page. So how do we do that? So first of all, you usually like to have a trigger or a button that gets the data. So we can, uh, we'll just keep the add button there and we'll get rid of the rest of this HTML. So this will be get JSON. So now our button is going to be called get JSON. When we click it, we want to invoke and we want to get the JSON information. So we'll just uh, clean this up a little bit here. And I'm going to set up some values. So we'll do a const, make this bigger as well. Uh, so this is going to be my add. So this is add button. And we'll just grab that add button. I'm going to break this apart because it's awfully long. Uh, and then add button is going to have event handler. 
So whenever that gets clicked, then it's going to be add JSON. And that's going to be our function that gets invoked. And let's set that up. So add JSON function. So whenever that button gets clicked, and again, console log, and we'll just do clicked, just to make sure it's working, of course. So let's uh, minimize this. And let's go back out to our JSON. So we'll keep that one open in the background there. And we're going to open up the get JSON. So refresh. So clicked is working. So our click button is working. Although it doesn't look like a button, you can obviously add styling if you want to make it look more like a button, of course. Uh, so next, we've got a way to trigger off our JSON. So at this point, we want to also have another div here. And maybe we can just call this one output. So now I'm keeping, th I'm trying to keep things super simple here. Uh, so we're just doing IDs and then this one can be blank. And then over here, let's do output and then document. And we can also use query selector for one or two. So query selector. And then because this is an ID, of output, make sure you have the hash. That's the thing when you use query selector, it's just like CSS, you gotta make sure you either do the hash or the dot for the classes or just by the tag itself. So now we've got the output and we can do output inner HTML and let's do working. And all caps working. So we click the button and there's working. So we're actually able to update our HTML whenever we invoke our content and we want to now we want to get that information that's contained within this json file and i'm going to put it all on that same browser window there so that's our json object that we want to get from online and we want to output the first name and the last name into the output section so the next thing that we want to do is set up our fetch object so let's uh, do a url so the URL that we're fetching is going to be this one here. And fetch, for those of you that aren't familiar, so before with JavaScript, we did XHR requests, and then a lot of times AJAX was done with jQuery or other libraries, and now fetch is really a great way to get that data and uh, make use of that data. So we just do the fetch, and then in here, let's do our URL. So it's promise-based and within then we're returning back a function. So a lot of time we just call it response. So this is uh, simply going into the function and then you can make use of that returned information within the function as needed. Uh, so we've got our promise then. And you can also console log out information here as well. So you could do a console log and you can get the response object now that we've got one. And you can also get things like status if you want to. So let's see what happens. So go back, refresh, get JSON, clicked, and we're able to load. So we see that we get our status of 200. So that means it worked. We're returning back our JSON object. So we need to just transform that return content into a JSON format. So we can do a return, and the return can be the response text. And then we do our next promise, and this is where we actually output the content. So let's do another function. And then this one is gonna actually hold the data. And we're gonna also update this as well. So this is, again, out here. And then we can here we can console log out the data that's being returned. So let's take a closer look at that. Uh, we get the JSON. We see that it returns it back within a string format. And of course, now if we wanted to, we could parse that data. So we could do a console log. As we saw earlier, we can do a JSON parse and take that data and parse it out. So again, try that one more time and we parse it and then we got it within a usable format. But the nice thing about fetch is that it also has a built-in way of returning back that JSON data. So instead of response text, we can do response JSON and that's gonna transform it into a JSON format and I'll show you, we're not going to have to parse it anymore. So there we go. So we're able to automatically get it and return it back within a JSON format. And of course, we don't need this console log anymore. 
And then at this point, once we've got our JSON object, now the next thing is the easy part, it's simply outputting it into our output area. So go ahead and try this out for yourself. Set up a function that's gonna fetch to the URL where your JSON data is located. And then coming up next, I'll show you how you can loop through that data and then output it into your JavaScript. And you're also welcome to try that out as well. And I'll show you the solution coming up in the next lesson. Welcome back. I hope you had an opportunity to try out fetch. Now in this lesson, we want to output the results from the data and output it into our HTML. And this is actually gonna be relatively easy because we saw in the earlier lesson that we're retrieving back the data. It's already within a JSON format, so JavaScript object format. So it's gonna be really simple to grab and use. So we've already hooked up our output. So we need to just grab output. We can do inner HTML and we're gonna set the inner HTML of output. So we can do first name and equals. And now within data first, we've got that object information and then last name equals and then add in the data last name. And of course we can get all of those values that are there so we can get age as well and any number of values that are contained within our JavaScript or JSON objects. So we could get age as well if we wanted to. So let's try that out, click, and there we go. So we've got first name, last name being populated from this JSON file. So it's as easy as that to make your Ajax request, return back some content, and then output that content into your HTML. So we wanna actually do something a little bit more complex coming up in the next lesson. Uh, so the exercise is gonna be using an API, so random user ME is a great open source API and it's useful for generating use user data. So this is simply random user data. These people don't actually exist. Well, I'm sure they exist, but not as they're represented here within the generator. So this is a great way to get filler content if you want some user content. And you can see that I've got results one. I can also do results 10. And then right away, this becomes a whole lot less readable. And remember earlier where we could grab JSON data and we could use a resource like JSON lint. We could paste it in there and check to see if it's valid JSON, but we can also get it in a more readable format. And this is also really helpful when you have these JSON objects. They're very complex. They might have uh, an object and then they've got an array within there and then they might have multiple results within that array. So you need to be able to loop through that and output the content as needed. And I'll show you all of that coming up in the next lesson where we're gonna first start out by retrieving back just the one user and then outputting it into our HTML. And then we're gonna load several users, 10 users, and also output that into our HTML. And this is going to be a great practice exercise to get more familiar with JSON and how it works in JavaScript. This lesson is going to be a lot of fun and it's going to be a great way to practice JSON, especially when you have more complex JSON objects, such as the one from random user. So we see we've got a lot of values in there and it's all contained within the results array. So that's the one that we're gonna be first using when we retrieve back that data. So let's go ahead and grab that URL and we'll make some quick updates to our code. We'll keep the button. So this is gonna trigger getting the JSON and maybe we'll do now get user. So we're getting that user. So that can all stay the same. Uh, the output, that one is fine as well. Uh, we can get rid of the clicked because we no longer, we know that it's working. We can get rid of that as well. Uh, and let's update our API. So let's uh, paste the URL. We can get rid of this console. Uh, we'll keep the console data because this is always a great way to kind of parse through your content. And now let's try it out. Let's see what data we're retrieving back from random user ME. So it's refresh, hit get user. And you see that we get this results. So it's an array. And this is where the main information is being kept. So if we had multiple users, so let's change that to 10, and then we'll go back to one just to try that out. So this time we have the results array 
has 10 items in there. And we know that with JavaScript, we can really easily loop through arrays. Uh, so I'll show you how to do that as well coming up. Uh, so for now, let's just work with the one result. And let's go back in here. And we see that we're returning back that one result. So usually the way that I like to do it is I want to set a variable and I'm going to just call it person. So this is going to contain all of the results or we can call it people uh, so that when we're coming up and we're creating more, we've got all of the results within people. And then console log, instead of just console logging out the results, we'll log out people. So this is also going to be a value that we're going to be able to loop through. So make that small again, hit get user, and there's our array of people. So uh, this one is going to be the first one. We know we only have one. Uh, so this actually makes it really easy to output that content. Uh, so if we wanted to output the first name and last name of the user, so we've got the first name, last name. Uh, so in this case, it's name first, last. Uh, so just like you would with any JavaScript object, you can traverse down. So let me show you how we're going to do that within the code. Uh, so I've got it here on the left-hand side. So people is equal to all of the results here. And if we want to get the first result, because it's an array, we can do zero. So let's try that. So now we've got just the first person, just the first object that's available in there. So how do we get to name? How do we get this name information? And because now it's just a JavaScript object, and we saw this earlier before, where I can do name and refresh again, and I can really zero in on that object, that name object. So now it's just a matter of doing first and last. So first, and if you're also, you can do it within that bracket format as well. So you could do it within this way as well. That's all valid. It's a little bit, uh, usually I do prefer this object type format, uh, but again, it's up to you. So we've got our first and then our last. So now when I go to the inner HTML, so we can do first and we can do last. So now we've got first name, last name, and every time we click it, we get a different first name and last name. And we can also style this a little bit better now as well. So if we wanted to do a new line, so refresh. So now we're getting random people, first names and last names. So it's as easy as that to work with an API, pull that information and use it within your JavaScript. So now it's up to you. So try this out for yourself. Uh, grab the API. So you can use the same one that I'm using within this lesson, the randomuser.me forward slash API, and just grab one result, or you don't need one by default, it will just show you the one, and then you can return that information back and then make use of it within your JavaScript code. And coming up next, I'll show you how we can handle 10 results. So that's gonna be even more interesting. Welcome back and I hope you had an opportunity to try out getting back some results from the API. And right now in this lesson, we're gonna increase the results to 10 and we're no longer gonna output it within our HTML because we've got uh, some updates that we still have to do, but we are gonna output that value into the console log so we can see what's being returned back. So when we click the button, we see that we get an array being returned back. So we wanna use this array, we wanna iterate through all of the values within the array and then output it into our output container and output it within our HTML. So before that, let's set up a quick little test and I wanna show you how map works. So we'll just call it test button and we'll call it test map. So we'll have another button there that we can click and it'll do something within our JavaScript and this is just for testing purposes in order to demonstrate how maps are going to work. So we'll call it test button and over here, get element by ID test button. And we're going to call it test tester. And then let's set up our function. So this function is also called tester. And this is what's going to actually get initiated, invoked 
whenever we click that second button. So I like to, again, uh, just make sure that things are working and we need to update the test button with, uh, sometimes when you copy and paste, this type of thing happens. So let's uh, try that one more time. So save that and refresh it. And this time we see that it's working. So that's exactly what we wanted. And we wanna actually test out how we can output content from an array. So let's say for instance, we have just a basic array. So we'll call it temp array and we'll assign some values. So there, these are just some random values. So there we go. So we got some random values. And then what we wanna do with those values is we wanna build out another array out of it. So test temp array two. And we're gonna take the values from the temp array. We're gonna map them out into our function. And then within this function, we're gonna take the values and then we can do something with those values. So for now, let's just console log out those values. Or actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna return something. So we'll take val, we'll multiply it by two. And then just down here below, we'll console log out the value that's contained within the temporary two. So what do you think is gonna happen here when we click the button? What are, what's gonna be output here? This is temporary two. So it's taking all of the values of temporary one, it's mapping them, applying some functionality, returning some values, and then actually outputting it within our console. So let's refresh and try that out. So you see what happened here is that using map gave us the ability to iterate through all of the values within the array as we built out a brand new array and then within this brand new array, we were just taking that initial value and we were multiplying it by two. And that's how we constructed our brand new array. So there's actually a great way to build out your HTML as well using the map function. So let me show you how that works. So we're gonna grab the value and we can also get the index value if we wanted to. So we'll just call it I for index. And you can see that uh, we can also add the index value to it if we wanted to. So that's gonna be another value that's gonna be contained within there. And this actually gives you another option as well. So now instead of just being multiplied out, we're also adding that initial value of I to it. So the first iteration has uh, value times two. So it's four times two plus zero. And then we're doing four, uh, five times two plus one and so on. So you can see the pattern there that's being built out there. So we're taking in those values and then we're utilizing them within our HTML. So what I wanted to do instead is to actually build out our inner HTML. So I'm gonna return back a list item and then within this list item, I can have some maybe some dynamic values. So I'll have the value times two and then we're gonna close off those list items. And then within here, we're gonna use this I as well. So just close this one off and we'll put an equal sign there and a plus. So now we're building out some HTML. So next step is to take our values that we're returning back. So let's, instead of temporary, we'll call it HTML. So we'll build out an HTML value. And right now when I go with the HTML, you're gonna see that what's being logged out here is not, it's still gonna be within an array format, but we have a really quick way with JavaScript how we can take this array and we can actually convert it back into a string value so we can remove out all of the array functionality. And we can do that with JavaScript join. So what we're doing is we're simply joining together and outputting that joined value. So let's try that one more time and refresh. And now it looks like we do have some HTML within a string format. So the next step is just to update our inner HTML and we can do that within this type of format. So we'll just do an unordered list and we're gonna add the HTML to it. And then we're gonna do un close off the unordered list and we'll do it like that. So let's uh, try this out one more time. So refresh, test map, and you can see that we're outputting all of that content so all we have to do still, we still have to join it. So we didn't actually output that joined value. So let's take that value and instead of just doing the HTML, let's uh, join that together. So we do the join and refresh and try that one more time. And there we've got our output. 
So now the objective is to take what you've learned in this lesson about maps and apply that down here with similar to what the example is that we built out earlier and using that random user API value, the results. So remember, it's returning back an array. So you can take that array, you can map it, and you can return back, you can format the HTML, join it together, and then output it within your output element. And coming up next, I'll show you the solution to this exercise. In the previous lesson, we saw how we can use map in order to take a value, bunch of values from an array and output a brand new array. And we also saw how we can join it together to create a string value and then use that string value within our inner HTML. So we want to do the same thing for the results from random user ME API. And we've already got the results back in a JSON format. We already saw that we do have those results. So we wanted to do, to do something similar to what we did up here. And that was the purpose of this exercise was to try this out using map in order to map out those values. So we know that the data results that are coming in, so this is gonna be an array. And we're just uh, simply taking that people array that we have. So this is the existing array and then we're mapping out all of those values. So we're taking the values, and right now we know that from earlier, we know that the people array is actually has some additional options here that we need to account for. So we need to still build that out before we return back those values, and this is where we need to do the name first as well. So we've got our value, and for now, what I'm gonna do is I'll console log it out so we can take a closer look at actually what we're seeing as we're logging it out. All of these values, but we're also gonna be grabbing the name value for it. So for now, let's, uh, let's get rid of this and we're gonna return back just the index values and then we're gonna take all of those returned index values and we're gonna apply it to output. So we're gonna take that HTML, join it together and we should have some type of output. So let's uh, try that out. So get user. So we get all of the index values from the user and you can see within the console log, we're logging out all of this data. So now this is the chance to try out and work with JSON again and go through this JSON object an array with the objects inside of it and pick out the information that you wanna return back. And in this case, we wanna do name first and last. So now instead of just returning back the value, we wanna take that value and go name first, just like what we did within one of the earlier lessons and then output that instead. So let's take value and then name first and we'll see what we get returned back. So let's try that one more time. Go back out, refresh it, get user. Save, refresh, get user, and we can see that we're getting all of these users' names. So we're getting the first names. So now, next step is to pick up the last names. So similar to what we just did with the first names, we can do the same thing literally for the last names as well. So let's add that in. So instead of name first, it's just name last. And we can also add in the index value so that will put the index value and it will also give you the first and last name. And usually I like to start with one. So let's add one to that index value. So it's not starting at zero because we know with arrays, the default value starts at zero. So there we go. So we've got a list of all the users and this is fully dynamic. So if we're returning back 50 users, we can see that we're getting 50 different names and results there. So go ahead and try this out for yourself. And coming up next, uh, we're gonna tweak this solution, um, also getting them into uppercase, just using some JavaScript in order to accomplish that. So we're gonna do some tweaks to our code that we're outputting. So go ahead and try this out for yourself. In the previous lesson, we saw how we can grab some data from an API and then use it, iterate through it, and use it within our JavaScript. And we can also make some updates to it. So if we wanted to set our first name value and then take that first name that's being returned back there, and we can add some JavaScript functionality. So there's two uppercase 
and let's turn that into a method and we're going to do the same thing for last name as well so we're going to take the value and then again going down the object and taking that to uppercase and then instead of having it within the return string we can just pass in these new variables that we've just created with the JavaScript functionality. So you can do quite a bit with the data that's contained within that returned response and then really make uh, use of it, the data, and customize your code in order to output the data the way that you want it to be output. So let's see what that looks like. So let's refresh, get user. So now we're getting them all in uppercase. And we see that it's all uppercase. So ideally we want to capitalize this. So we'll add in one more function in here. And this is going to be a string prototype. So this gives you the ability to update the prototype for strings. So string prototype. And let's create a brand new one. We'll call it capitalize. So that way, whenever we render out capitalize, what we're going to do is we're going to transform that string value to uppercase. So do a return there and we'll take the this value and take character at. So we're going to take the first character and we're going to bring that first character to uppercase. So just what we did earlier. And then also take that and we're going to slice it at one. So return that back. So now we can use capitalize instead of to uppercase. So that will create a capitalized effect within JavaScript. And this is how you can do some uh, even more customizations. So throwing that in and update that to capitalize as well. So let's uh, try that one out now as well. So go back out, refresh. So now we've got the capitalized users. And I think this is ideally what you want because they're users' names. So you get the first name, last name. And you can also make use of the other data here as well that's contained. So we see that we've got gender. We can also output pictures if we wanted to. So there's a lot of things that we can do there. So let's, uh, coming up next, we'll do some more tweaks to the code that we're outputting. And we're going to output some of the images as well. So we'll really build out all of these elements that we're outputting. So some more tweaks coming up next. And it is important to kind of play around with what you've got available within the API and see what data is being returned back and challenge yourself to access that data and then output it in different ways, in different formats within your HTML. So coming up next, some more tweaks to the code. In this lesson, I want to apply some more tweaks to the code. So right now we're able to generate some random users. And in this lesson, we wanted to look at some additional data that we can pull back from our user. So we've got the first name and last name that we've been working with, and we've got an option to pull back images as well. And we can also get additionally things like the email and so on. So let's bring the image into this list item. And we're going to also restructure the way that we're building out our JavaScript in order to actually create some HTML nodes. And then we're simply going to be returning this all back. And also I wanted to add in catch as well. So catch gives us the ability to catch if there's if we're throwing any errors. And usually we just do error. So whatever error comes back and then we output the error within the console. So we can see that if we are throwing any errors for whatever reason, we can actually see them within the console. So always a good idea when you're creating and using fetch that you do have the catch there as well. So the thing that I want to add in, so let's uh, also, let's just try that out. Just make sure that everything is still working properly, which it is. So we're good to go on. And this lesson, I also want to do a little bit more with the data that we're returning back. So what we've been doing right now, we're just build, building out a simple list item here and returning it back. Uh, so what I wanted to do instead is that we've got this map functionality. And instead of mapping it to the HTML, we want it to build it directly within the HTML. So we don't want to have to use the HTML variable, we simply want to just take that value and we want to return that back. So we want to do a return on that. So we want to incorporate all of that functionality here within what we're building out. And we're no longer going to be joining it. We're just going to be simply returning back all of that. So what we want to do now, we can 
we need to add to that output in our HTML all the list items. And I'm going to actually turn these into divs. So they're going to be a little bit di different. They're not going to be list items. And now we need to grab that and clean this up a little bit. So the way that this is going to work, and um, if you look at the code, there are some issues with this. So let's uh, let's try that out, and then I'll explain how we can get around those. So right now, when I'm clicking it, I'm only getting the last user because we're actually just overwriting that inner HTML that we have available within output. So this isn't really ideal, and we need to find actually a better solution. So we need to take that element and we need to append that element as a child so we want to actually create an element and let's do it within this type of format as well so we'll let div so these are all temporaries so every time it iterates through there it's going to actually create an element and we'll use document and this is javascript so create element in case you want to add additional functionality into your elements. So first of all, let's create a div and we're also going to create an image as well, because again, we want to grab that image information. So we're going to create an element and the element that we're creating is going to be an image. So creating an image, creating a div, and then we're going to place the image was inside the div. And we're also going to then place the div append it to output instead of doing the inner html we're going to use append so that's going to be the difference here so let's take that new image that we created and let's apply a source to the image so we have a value of people and now we need to kind of go through what's being returned here so let's make this a little bit smaller and we can see that uh, we want to actually get to the people, the images that's contained within the people. So how do you do that? If we go down, we see we've got all of this information. We've got picture, we've got large, medium, and thumbnail. When what we want to do is we want to grab that thumbnail and place it as the image source. So let's go down here as we loop through the array. So we've got people and then picture. And then we just select the picture that we want and we want to grab the thumbnail. So that's going to be the small one. We're going to grab the thumbnail and then we're going to take that value and we're going to append it into that div. And we also want to create a span as well. So let's do our span and document. So again, we need to do a create element. And then we're just going to drop them one inside the other and then ultimately append that div to our output element. So creating a span. And then within the span, I want to add in some inner HTML. So within the span, we're going to have inner HTML. And then this is where we're actually going to put the this information here. So we can grab it. I'll make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. All we're doing is we're using JavaScript append child, and then we're going to be appending the div to that output element. So all of the divs. So next, we need to place those values within the divs. So let me move this stuff up as well. So we want to place a few values and contain them within our div. So let's uh, take our div and we're going to use append child and the child that we're going to append within the div. So the first one is going to be the span. So we'll append that and then we'll take div and we're going to append another child into it. And the other child that we're appending into it is the image. And I just realized I use people here and I need to use the value instead of people because people is that full array. So let's try that out again. So get user. And that way we can see that we're outputting all of the users profiles along with their pictures. So these are again, randomly generated. And this is another way and probably a better way to output that content. So every time we click get user, we're getting a new set of users and we're continuously appending those new users. So what we also want to do is every time it gets clicked, what we want to do is clear out that output, that inner HTML of output. So let's do that as well. So instead of, we'll grab our output and inner HTML. 
and we'll just equal that to be blank. So that's two single quotes. So that way it's gonna always overwrite because we see what's happening here is we're just constantly adding more users into our output HTML and we don't wanna be doing that. We want them refreshing and reloading, kind of like this. So perfect, so this is exactly what we're going for. And of course, you're welcome to style it even more and also take a look through what available content is available within the JSON object and output some different content within your web page and try it out for yourself. Welcome back and in this lesson, you're gonna to need to have a Google account because we're gonna be using a spreadsheet. So just a regular Google spreadsheet, just gonna be creating one right now. And this is just gonna be our testing JSON spreadsheet because in order to practice and test to make sure that you become really familiar with JSON, it's really nice to be able to create your own database objects and your JSON objects to use. So we've got a couple fields that I'm entering in here. So I've got actually four different ones here and I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger, bold them. So you can call them whatever you want. And then I'm just gonna populate some values in here. And of course, obviously not my real email and then give an ID or whatever we wanna call it. So this is just to practice uh, because what we wanna do is we wanna fetch the data that we've got contained within our Google spreadsheet and then output it within our application. So I wanna make sure that we've got a nice sampling of some emails and some data there that we can then output. And I'll show you how to output it as well. So we'll call it Jane Doe. Jane Doe or Jane Joe, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so once you've got some data in there, so this is just regular Google spreadsheet and you can actually publish it to the web and you can output it within a JSON format. And we're gonna do this and then we're gonna grab the data and then output it within our website. So in order to publish it to the web, just go to file and click publish to the web. And then this is gonna give you an option here to publish to the web so you can publish the entire document or you can just select one sheet. And you've got some options here and we just wanna stay with the web page. Uh, and then also there's some options here for publish content and settings and so on. So let's go ahead and publish. So we're just publishing this and we've got the ability to share this. So anyone with this URL is gonna be able to see that data. And I'll show you what that looks like. So this isn't exactly what we want to use, but we can see that that content gets output onto the web. So in order to get it within a JSON format, there's actually a URL for that. And it requires you to copy out your spreadsheet ID. So just grabbing that ID there. And now let's go over to our editor. So open that editor back up and we can clear out most of the stuff we have here. And I'm also gonna minimize this one as well. So go back out to our application that we're building. And I'm gonna get rid of that, the test map so because we don't need to make use of that. So I'll get rid of some of the code that's here. We'll keep the output so that we can still make use of it. Uh, I'll get rid of all of the tester stuff and we can get rid of the prototype, probably not gonna need it. Uh, also, we're gonna keep the output so we can output that content and we're gonna update this URL and we're gonna fetch the URL. So we, yeah, we can clear out the output in our HTML, so that's fine, we can keep that. We wanna return it back within a JSON format and then we wanna take that data and we're not gonna have the same returned results. So first of all, what we wanna do is simply output it within our console so we can take a closer look and we can see actually what's happening with that data. So we get rid of all of that stuff from the earlier lesson and we're simply gonna just output it as JSON. So let's just make sure things are still working. So everything is still working with the previous API and now we're gonna try to connect to the application that we just built. So this is the URL to, in order to do that. So it can get rid of this as the URL. So this is spreadsheets.google.com. And then you need to forward slash to feeds. 
and then to list. And then this is where you paste your spreadsheet ID. So that's the ID as well, or you could just do const ID to make it a little bit shorter. So we can take that ID value and then just simply drop it into our string value there. So that's going to contain the ID value. And then there's still a little bit more left to the string. So forward slash, so it's OD6 and public basic with a question mark, alt equals JSON. So this should be able to output that content within a JSON format. So let's try that out. And we can see that we're actually getting something returned. So that's good news, of course. And we can see that it's being returned back as JSON. So now let's take a closer look at this. And what I want you to do now as well, if you do have a Google account, then go ahead, open up the spreadsheet and output your content, create some content within the spreadsheet, and then take a closer look at that content and see what you want to output. And I'll show you how to do that, how to grab all the elements that are available there, and then how you can output them within your web page. So I'll show you that coming up next. So for now, just set up your Google spreadsheet and grab the JSON data that's being output for it. We saw that we're able to return back a feed. And if we actually change this to values, we're going to get a better JSON feed. So let's uh, try that out. So right now, this is the one that we're getting. And we've got our feed here. But we want to get all the data and all the information. So it looks the same. But now when you go into entry, you can see that there's even more information. And each one of these GSX, so we've got email, first name, and ID. Uh, and last name, and they coincide with the values that we have here. So there's email, first name, last name, and ID. So they're all represented within this GSX format. So that means that now we can take that data and we can actually loop through it. So let's navigate down through all of our JSON data that's coming again from our Google spreadsheet. And instead of just data, we're gonna do feed, and then within the feed, we want to get the entry. So this should produce our array of data that we want to make use of. And we know that because we have three lines, we get three options, uh, three being returned there. So now if I refresh it, I get four. So each one of the lines here or the rows within my spreadsheet is going to be represented by another item within the array and we see that they're all formatted within the same way so that makes it really easy to grab that data and then make use of it and in this case we're just going to do a simple for loop so we're going to start out by letting x equals zero we'll set this up to our entry and then we're going to loop while x is less than the length of entry so there's a number of ways to, to go through the data that's available. And for now, let's uh, simply log out. So we'll log out entry and get the value of x. And then we're going di to dive deeper into getting that data. So again, let's refresh it because we only have the four there. Uh, so what we want to do is we actually want to output this information into our HTML. So we're going to do it really simple within this time uh, where we're just going to simply grab all the items. So let's do let and we'll do email. And so email is going to equal entry and index value of X. And then we can grab the value of it by using GSX and then grabbing that email object. And then also we need to get the value of T because this is again an object within an object. So a little bit tricky, but of course, great practice when you're trying to practice and use various JSON formats. So let's see what happens. So there we go. We see we're able to output all of those emails and we can do the same thing for the other entries as well. So we had our email and let's copy this out. So we had our email and let's look at the other values that we had. So we also had first name, we had last name and we have ID. So we know that uh, it's all lowercase. So we'll update this to be lowercase. We'll update this just to be first name. 
Uh, so we can just call this first. So we'll just keep it a little bit shorter here. And then this is last, and then this is going to be last name. So let's uh, try that one more time. Make sure we don't throw any errors. So we're still outputting that information. So now, as we loop through, let's do output inner HTML, and we're just going to add to it. Uh, so let's build out our inner HTML. And we have a number of options. We can do it similar to how we did it last time as well. So it's all up to you. Uh, whatever method works best for you. So I'm going to do a little bit of space. I'll make this bigger so we can see the string as we're building it out. So then this is going to contain the last name and I'll space that out. And then next, let's do our email address. And again, just uh, this is just spacing it out. And of course, you can style it probably way better than what I'm doing here. And then we'll just close off that div. So now I think we are ready to try this out and see what it looks like within our web page. So click and there we go. So we get all of that data coming in. Uh, you can update that data to be whatever you want. And then every time you click it, you get that newly updated data. And this is also a great way just to become familiar with working with JSON, outputting that data from your JSON, and you can really easily update it. You can add values, so you could do a new value, and we can just call it test, and, uh, and then add that one in as needed as well. So go ahead and try this out for yourself, and a great way to practice and become even more familiar with JSON. In this lesson, we're going to do a quick overview of what we learned and what we saw in the earlier lessons. So we started out by introducing how different data types behave within JavaScript. And we know that with different data types, we can mix and match them, add them together. And as we saw in the later part of the course, sometimes those JSON objects can be fairly complex where there's an object and then there's an array within those objects. And then there's also objects within that array and so on and so on. And it can go fairly deep. So it's important to understand the basics where the different data types that are available and how we can access them and how they can all fit together one inside of the other. And then if you want to retrieve back that information, how you can navigate to get the values using the named value in order to retrieve back the value that you're looking for. We also saw how we can use JSON and we can stringify JSON. And then we can also output it back into a usable format. So this was taking it from an object format, turning it into a string, bring it back into an object, making an update to it, and then turning it back into a string. So this is very useful, and it's very important, again, to understand this, that this is all possible, and there are use cases where you definitely need to turn those objects into strings, and then, of course, if you've got a string, to make it usable, you can turn it back into an object. And we saw how that works with local storage, where we can add content into our local storage, we can view our local storage, and this is all done and accomplished using our stringify and the different methods to transform that content into a string version and then parse it back. So we saw how that worked and we saw how we can output that information. We could add it to storage and we can view what's in the storage. And we also tweaked it and set up some defaults so that if there's nothing in the storage that we're just outputting none. So we saw how that all fit together and the usefulness of making use of those JavaScript objects. We also saw how we can connect to different APIs and JSON objects online. So we created a bin in the myJSON bin, and this was just a really simple JSON object that we had created, and we posted that online, and then we retrieved it on our local machine and output it within our web page. And that was the objective to just become familiar that there's web APIs, and we can get content from those web APIs. Next, we looked at an API that had a bunch of information that it was returning back. And then we made use of that information that was returned back. We pulled out a first name and a last name, and we updated this information that's coming from the API dynamically generated from the server. And then we updated our HTML. 
And we also saw how we can extend that functionality and how we can build out some really nice functionality doing that where we could build out using the map method and also we could retrieve back multiple results and then how we can navigate through those results and get access to the data that we're looking for. So that particular value, whatever you're looking for, you should be comfortable enough. And if you're not, then always go back and practice with these various web APIs in order to navigate through the different objects that are contained within the JavaScript arrays and output get to the various values that you're looking for. So challenge yourself, try to get back the state, postal code, coordinates, uh, login information, and really navigate deep into the JSON API to try that out. So we saw how that worked and we also added some tweaks and adjustments to bring in images and customize the output using some JavaScript functionality. And this is where you can really see how JSON can make, how you can make use of JSON data within your JavaScript where you can create things like various prototypes and then update that data as it comes in and then output it within different types of formats on your web page. So we saw how that all fits together. And then finally, uh, we also saw a great way to practice working with JSON uh, where you can use your Google Sheet, you can output it, publish it to the web, and then that gives you the ability to access it using the spreadsheet google.com feeds list ODA public values and then alt api and we're able to retrieve back those th that data we can also see that if we do if we simply go to the basic we get a basic feedback but it's not really ideal in order to output that data into our web page and that's why we needed to use values so we saw that in the last lesson where we're outputting those values and we're able to actually grab and navigate to the various columns and rows and output that data within our HTML page. We also saw that there's a number of different great resources online. So going into JSON Lint. So this is a great way to lint your JSON to make sure that you've got some valid JSON and also making it more readable. So when you've got a bunch of stuff there without any white space, a little bit hard to read. So these validators and linters are a great way to go. There's also a JSON generator. And then when you press generate, you can see that this generates out a bunch of JSON data and there really is truly a lot of it. So you then you could just put in the validator and, and also get it more readable. And you see that this is valid JSON. So make sure that you generate it. There's a number of different templates that you can use. And this is another great way to practice and really get used to working with JSON. You could also take this and post that into your JSON bin. So you could go to the my JSON post it in there, save it, and then this will give you a URL to access a bunch of data online and then practice pulling it into your web pages. And then there's also the output with the MyJSON bins, the way that they're gonna look. So this one, if we take this one and if we output it, so this one's gonna be way more complex. And you can see that just as a string value, it's not very readable. So again, bring it into the JSON lint to make it more readable. So these were some great ways. And this was another one, the object generator, uh, gave you a quick and simple way to generate some JSON data. And then you can use this to practice as well and make use of it within your JavaScript. And the best way to learn, of course, is to practice. So open up your editor and practice with the tools that we presented within the course, how to use JSON and bring it into your web pages.